Cyclone churning in the Mediterranean Sea on tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for November 23rd. Well, with Atlantic hurricane season ending in just a week from now, we still have an area of interest at a 50% chance of development and this Mediterranean cyclone, which is certainly in cy is cyclonic in way of actually revolving, but isn't anywhere near becoming tropical at the moment and is currently at 20%. In the Atlantic then, we've got uh, this 50% chance still, an area of interest, which we really can't call at the moment. National Hurricane Center are also similarly undecided with a 50% chance on their books as well. Models are split and it could become a subtropical or tropical cyclone briefly as it heads towards the Azores. In the Eastern Pacific, we still haven't marked anything at the moment, uh, but we do take note that that system is still active over there uh, towards the central part of the image, uh, towards the bottom there, um, certainly looking interesting on satellite imagery as you'll discover shortly. In the Western Pacific, we're really starting to see the formation of this area of interest that we've been watching now to the southeast of southern Vietnam. 20% that we're giving it at the moment, and those chances could rise later on. It is likely to pass through the Malay Peninsula and into the North Indian Ocean, where it could become a substantial cyclone. Regardless of development, it does appear that some of these areas will receive very high amounts of rainfall, flooding rains possible for large parts of the Malay Peninsula, from Malaysia uh, through Thailand. And in the Mediterranean Sea, we're giving it a 20% chance. It's looking decent as a system all of its own. Whether it becomes a tropical cyclone or not, it's looking somewhat unlikely, but it does have the winds right now, 40 miles per hour estimated, an estimated pressure of 997 millibars. Well, here's a look at it right now, and you can see it churning away there. This is like a three or four hour loop from this evening, looking to the south of Sicily there in Italy. Uh, I imagine it's not too far from Malta either. I can't see it marked on the map there. Uh, in fact, yes, it's very close to where the center of this system is. You can see it there. Uh, but gradual movement towards the north, and it will whip around the south coast of Sicily and then round towards Tunisia and move inland over Africa. This is the Atlantic system that's still not fully got on its feet yet, uh, but 50% chance on this and it could end up trying to get detached from its front. And this is the Eastern Pacific system, quite clearly that's a swirl there, so there's a circulation. Uh, convection is very limited, I imagine it's heavily sheared on that northern side because there's no convection at all, not even trying to form on that north side of this system, um, and I imagine it's winds struggling too. This is the Western Pacific system, very broad and disorganized at the moment, but some models are indicating that it might have a chance to really tighten up before reaching the North Indian Ocean and becoming a Western Pacific named storm in the next few days. Otherwise, it may just hold on for a little longer before starting to develop and may possibly get another name in the North Indian Ocean next week. And because we have a little bit extra time there, just a quick zoom out at the Atlantic system. A very long front which extends all the way up through the North Atlantic towards Iceland and Greenland. Sea surface temperatures right now are very good still in parts of the eastern Pacific off the coast of Mexico. Really the only last bastion of warm sea surface temperatures above 30 degrees Celsius there. Out to sea you can see it's very cool. In the Atlantic temperatures are still elevated in the Caribbean Sea, especially around Jamaica and the Cayman Islands, 28 to 30 degrees Celsius. And around the southern Bahamas and Turks and Caicos Islands temperatures are still looking good there as well. In the western Pacific temperatures remain warm in the Philippines Sea and around the uh, Mariana Islands and also for parts of the South China Sea, particularly further south where that system could be developing 28 to 30 degrees Celsius there at least, with some areas especially in the Gulf of Thailand being a little bit warmer. Bay of Bengal also looking decent through the Andaman Islands, but just note there off the coast of Bangladesh and West Bengal those temperatures really drop off a cliff, so if any systems try to get towards that coastline they'll be rapidly weakening by then. 
off Madagascar, still very warm temperatures and still increasing, and around uh, Mauritius as well, which is above average, and around the Australian region, really elevated temperatures off Western Australia, above 32 degrees Celsius, and in the Gulf of Carpentaria, those temperatures building there as well. Same story for the South Pacific, of course it's expected at this time of year around Fiji and Vanuatu, especially right now, temperatures pushing above 28 degrees. In the Western Pacific, it's slightly above average, around 2 degrees generally, a little bit higher in the South China Sea, Bay of Bengal about 2 degrees above, Arabian Sea 2 to 3 degrees, Southwest Indian Ocean very warm near the Mascarene Islands, up to 3 or 4 degrees above average, the Australian region is mixed and so is the South Pacific. The El Nino effect still very prominent in the Eastern Pacific and in the Atlantic, it's generally quite above average there as well, including for that other area of interest. There'll be no oceanic heat content for it though, that's all in the Caribbean there. Uh, any last chances of storm development will probably occur there after this one goes by. In the eastern Pacific, still one or two little dregs of energy off the coast of Mexico. And in the western Pacific, really limping uh, onwards there as well with those, te uh, those uh, energy counts uh, gradually diminishing. So let's check the computer models. We've circled both these systems, the Atlantic one and the Mediterranean one. Mediterranean first, quickly barreling past the southern uh, coast of uh, Sicily into northern Tunisia and then eventually into Algeria as it pulls in towards the southwest and then south. The other system in the Atlantic, well there it is and let's watch that one again. It starts to move up towards the northeast over the weekend probably. It tries, it probably eventually becomes one system with one circulation. It may be a fight uh, between multiple circulations there and still the jury is out on whether it becomes a tropical cyclone or a nameable storm at all. Western Pacific, well the GFS is very keen on this system to attain tropical cyclone intensity and probably more than that. Looks like it was a borderline typhoon there before making landfall in, um, I think that might even be the coast of very southern Thailand there, if not Malaysia, and then moving towards the northwest, uh, continuing through the Andaman Sea, losing a lot of its shape as it does so, and then getting some of it back as it reaches the Andaman Islands. But what's really telling on this one is the rain expectations which are very very high on this in fact it goes off the charts uh, with some rainfall expectations now for parts of very southern thailand i think it is uh, not far from koh samui the island out there uh, te uh, the rainfall amounts reaching and exceeding 40 inches 100 uh, 1000 millimeters goodness me um, for large parts of that coast possible with very elevated amounts all the way down through the rest of the Malay Peninsula. For parts of the Andaman Islands, it could reach 12 or 13 inches there as well, maybe even more if uh, the storm goes badly. That would be 300 millimeters. And even along the coast of Vietnam, eastern and northern Vietnam there, uh, the amounts getting close to six inches, 150 millimeters. So we're looking at seriously high amounts of rain. Well, this is the moderate range and you can see the storm swiveling up there towards the coast of Myanmar in the end as a very powerful cyclone actually uh, so we mentioned those cool sea surface temperatures of Bangladesh well they're not so cool still off the coast of Myanmar so that would be a bad case scenario there and certainly a possibility that storm could get to category 2 maybe even category 3 status before curving right in there um, and making a big recurvature. Scan the barcode and that will take you through to the Force 13 merch store where we have all of our usual items as well as our full season and individual storm animations on request. And are still waiting for Hone t-shirts which are still absolutely available and ready and waiting. In the Silly Range, we're still looking at the same area, the Indian Ocean, because a flurry of small systems starts to pop up on the GFS model. There's one, there's two, and eventually there's a third there in the Arabian Sea. Uh, none of them, it looks like, will affect land significantly, and maybe even a fourth little cyclone there in the Gulf of Thailand right towards the end of that loop. Uh, but that's all we've got in the Silly Range at this time. Um, interestingly, not really any signals from the Southern Hemisphere at the moment even up to the 16 day period and you can talk about all of that on our discord server discord.gg slash force 13 for tropical weather chat with thousands of members from all around the world 
Well, back on this day, it was a bit more active and we had Tropical Storm Delta in the Atlantic in 2005. Of course, that seriously crazy season. And a big one though, a small, well, <laughs> let's start that again. Small in size, but quite strong in intensity. Alvin Bertie, which was a borderline category four at this point near its peak intensity on November 23rd, 2005. One of the latest years really in which we got double barreled names before they stopped it. I think it was after that season. That was Alvin Bertie in 2005-6. Back to today, we're code blue, mainly for the Western Pacific. The next name in the Atlantic, though, is Vince. In the Eastern Pacific, it's still Ramon. And in the Central Pacific, of course, it is absolutely still Hone. We're stuck at 77 storms so far this year, 15 from the annual average. In the Western Pacific, the next name is Jellawat. In the North Indian Ocean, it's Mishang. And in the Southern Hemisphere, we really should be seeing a little bit more activity there soon. Of course, we've obviously had a little bit of a surprise in the South Pacific. But in the Australian region, the next name is Jasper. Southwest Indian Ocean starts with Alvaro. And in the South Pacific, our next name is Nat. That's all from tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. We'll return again tomorrow night.